Hello, Masaka Universe, for something slightly different. I've been talking about making a, a video about the African Nations uh, Cup of Nations qualifiers uh, for a while. We are finally there, and I'm very excited of doing this. I pulled out one of my two African shirts, the one of the current holders. It's not only four stars now, it's already five stars for Cameroon, second most successful team. Uh, if you don't recall, in 2017 they beat in the final Egypt which was kind of you know this is like if in Europe yeah Germany and Spain those are the most titled teams that would play each other I mean it's really or in the World Cup final uh, if Brazil would play Germany or Brazil would play Italy the absolute from the names best possible final the need of the nations were actually favored ahead of the tournament uh, but i think there was a great uh, tournament winning goal so that also has to be said uh there's actually lots to talk here and i will run through the group tell you through the groups tell you who qualified and then i have a little bit uh the few games that are highlighted ahead of the international break uh say how this impacted qualification a little bit but just before we go ahead, um, when it's in typical African fashion, everything changed during the qualification process. So first of all, the tournament was supposed to be hosted by Cameroon. It was a 16-team tournament, which, if you ask me, is for a continental tournament the perfect size. Um, but we still had 12 qualification groups where we would have the um, group winners would have qualified, and then I think. Cameron was already put in the group, but whoever was in there uh, would have guaranteed the spot, of course, and they would have been uh, then the best, the three best runner ups. And there were some conditions if Cameron doesn't finish in the top two, blah, 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 blah. Something like that uh, could have happened. Uh, that was scrapped in July last year when it was decided, yeah, we have the qualification process running, but you know. Let's make it a 24 tournament. Cameron, can you do that? Can you do that? Well, yeah, maybe Cameron can do that. Yeah, okay, make it 24. Made the qualification process easy because now it's all only the top two teams. But uh, with Cameron, uh, the group, you could already say, okay, if Cameron now finishes only third in the group, they still have the spot. So only the best team of the group and the second best team would uh, not qualify, something like that. Anyway, um, so we have 12 groups, and um, but we have more than uh, the required number uh, for 12 qualification groups of four. So there was a pre-qualification. That's where we start off the whole qualification process. Uh, let me get to it. And in the pre-qualification, as you can see here, Satome Principe uh, was beaten up by Madagascar, and remember that name, in two legs relatively easily. Comoros against Mauritius. Comoros uh, got through. Island duel, it's it's just great. I love Africa. And then Djibouti lost out to South Sudan. Just look at it. Uh, Djibouti at home wins 2-0, and then South Sudan beats them 6-0. Um, and then everyone was put in their groups and now we walk through the groups. In group A we had one of the most dominant teams in Africa uh, these days, which is of course Senegal, winning this group with 16 points ahead of Madagascar, which is a big surprise because that's the first time that they actually qualified. And they did it with uh, only two losses. Uh, one loss is at Su uh, versus Sudan at home and the other loss, of course, uh, to Senegal away. Uh, so that's a big surprise that uh, Madagascar qualified, but you know, Equatorial Guinea, also not that great at Sudan, was never a big, uh, as, of, as of late. Initially, they were actually a big nation in Africa, but as of late, they weren't. Group B, there we have already the first um, kind of hiccup. Uh, with Morocco winning the group level of points on Cameroon, but Cameroon didn't secure their spot until the last day with a 3-0 win over Comoros. Um, but, you know, if you look at the group, yes, there was a chance for uh, Cameroon being eliminated, but to be honest, really, Cameroon won all the home games uh, and away they drew, and that's what kind of made it tight. But uh, Morocco, Cameroon are just way ahead of everyone else. 
And now, having said that, uh, Cameron now qualified. Didn't I say the uh, Cameron had a fixed spot? No. In January, it, it was clear the camera will not be able to host this tournament so quickly. So the hosting rights were given to a team that had already qualified at that point, which was, uh, it was either between South Africa and Egypt. And people went with a safe vote for Egypt because Egypt had already qualified and, you know, has big history and camera was given the next uh, spot. Um, to be honest, I did not, I was a little bit surprised surprised about the whole thing because I still thought that Egypt is maybe a little bit shaky but maybe my politics are not quite up to date. Leave comments below here uh, to keep me up to date. Uh, I know the situation Egypt got a lot better and maybe hosted the Africa Cup of Nations will do even better. I actually think Egypt is a great host for this tournament. I mean they are a true African force. So I'm looking actually forward to have this tournament. <laughs> And so Morocco, Cameroon going to Egypt. Group C was between Mali and Burund. Uh, Mali and Burundi qualified ahead of Gabon and South Sudan. Uh, was also a last uh, day that Burundi got there a draw against Gabon. And uh, if you remember, Gabon had been host, had playing in there. They actually had a decent team. Now they didn't qualify. Burundi, one of the poorest nations in the world, uh, is qualifying for the final tournament. That's a pretty big surprise and I'm quite excited about it. Burundi is after Madagascar the second team that's qualifying for the first time. Mali on the other hand is almost Africa Cup of Nations royalty for the 10th time to qualify. By the way the others Senegal 14, Morocco 16, Cameroon 18 times, Mali 10 times. Group D Algeria 11 points uh, qualified for the 17th time and Benin also qualifies for the first time since 2010. Uh, they got their result with a 2-1 against Togo on the last uh, day of play. And I, yeah, and I think Gambia could have gotten a result against Algeria. If they would have won, they would have put Benin under more pressure. So uh, Benin just needed a draw to get through, but uh, they made it so with Algeria and Benin. Um, I read uh, a few days ago that this whole uh, Egypt, versus, uh, Egypt, Egypt versus Algeria qualifying troubles ahead of the 2010 World Cup. Uh, I hope that tensions are dissipating and we can have a normal relationship between those two. Group E, and I hope they will keep the jerseys. Uh, Nigeria qualified for also for the 17th time, like Algeria, but for the first time since 2013 when they last won it. They have not been at two consecutive Africa Cup of Nations. They've been twice at the World Cup, but they never made it to the Africa Cup of Nations. Go figure. Africa is just so level, which doesn't always mean that they are great uh, games, but it's always exciting. And then the other team that uh, qualified was South Africa, who won 2 1 at Libya. This is actually a pretty big result. South Africa qualifying for the ninth time, but given that they were for most of the time excluded uh, to, to the apartheid regime, that actually means that South Africa is regular contender at least since the mid 90s. Libya and the Seychelles uh, did not make it. Group F was a kind of a bright group because Sierra Leone got disqualified and there uh, because Sierra Leone got also suspended from um, FIFA and so the matches of Sierra, Sierra Leone were already played did not count. And with that it is Ghana for the 21st time and Kenya who were already draw qualified Ethiopia had no chance there. Kenya qualifies for the fifth time, the first time since 2004. I think this is the longest waiting period of any, nah, second longest of any team qualifying. Second longest in fact. Group G uh, was also going um, to the wire with Zimbabwe qualifying um, had um, of the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, I was about to say Dr. Congo because I, DR Congo, I always think Dr. Congo. Um, Zimbabwe had a 2 0 win against uh, Congo to qual qualify, and the Democratic Republic of Congo beat uh, Liberia, so that uh, made it easy for them. So uh, both of them qualifying, and Democratic Republic of Congo, which was Zaire before. 18 times. They are also a mainstay 
and kind of freedom from the really, really, really nice jerseys. Uh, you would usually uh, they used the flag and things the same thing as it. And it was also interesting to have the two Congos uh, play each other. So we see uh, the with the Democratic Republic winning three one at home and getting a one one against the home. Group H. Slight surprise, Guinea finishing ahead of the uh, Cote d'Ivoire, or Ivory Coast as it's written here. Um, but both were qualified well ahead, Guinea for the 11th time and Cote d'Ivoire for the 22nd time. I mean, they are really uh, re regulars, um, but have had a kind of a downward trend as of late. The Central African Republic uh, and Rwanda were never in, uh, really in contention in that group, so it was always going to be those two teams. Then, uh, Group I, and now this was kind of an uh, interesting situation because everyone could, uh, Botswana was out, out of it, but it was a um, three-way uh, three fight for two spots between Angola, Mauritania and Burkina Faso. Angola got the 1-0 win against uh, Botswana, that was enough, and then Mauritania, who actually um, was uh, top of the group ahead, ahead, ahead of the game, um, lost at home to Burkina, uh, lost to uh, at Burkina Faso one nil, but it was not enough for Burkina Faso since Angola got the win. So yeah, uh, if you ask me, I always want to say that Burkina Faso is my favorite African team, and just because I fell in love with them when they hosted the African Nations Cup, I think it was in '97, African Cup of Nations. Uh, and there was this crazy game um, for a third spot, was it against? No, it was not against South Africa. Yeah, against the Democratic Republic of Congo. But I think they were 4-1 up at 10, 10, 10 minutes ago, then it's 4-4 and it goes to penalties. Uh, I felt bad for them, but uh, from that moment on, I always look out for Burkina Faso. I would love it to see them at the World Cup uh, one time. That's how it goes. I mean, Cameroon is, of course, is uh, the other one, but um, yeah, Burkina Faso. Group J now is with the new hosts, Tunisia and Egypt. Tunisia is qualifying for the 18th time and Egypt for the 23rd time. That's most of anyone. And see, as hosts, they already had their spot secured, but when the hosting rights were given, Egypt was already qualified, so it was kind of easy. Niger and Iswatini. Uh, that was the former Swaziland, now it's Iswatini. Uh, miss out with five and one points, respectively. Now we have uh, probably the most exciting finish in the whole qualification process in Group K. Guinea Bissau and Namibia finish uh, in the qualifying spot with Mozambique and Zambia just behind. We have Guinea Bissau with nine points, Namibia and Mozambique with eight, and um, just thinking about the people of Mozambique uh, after the horrible storm hit and uh, what seems to be a large part of the country had just flooded. Uh, it's horrible to talk about, to me to talk about that when I really want to think about uh, soccer, but you know, it's a reality in Africa. These are poor countries and I really would love to, for them to get more uh, recognition worldwide and uh, awareness that they actually are out there and exist. Another reason, we know, we as Europeans or Westerners, we usually know way too little about Africa. Africa is such a huge continent with such a rich history um, that deserves a lot more attention than it gets. And yeah, this catastrophe, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. Uh, and yeah. I wish everyone the best there. But going back to the qualification, Zambia played Namibia um, and won for one. So this put Namibia under a lot of pressure because if Mozambique would win, Namibia is out. If um, and then it would be Guinea Bissau and Mozambique. Uh, although, let's quickly see. Guinea Bissau, what was the head to head with Namibia? Because then they would have had also um, eight points. It ended in a draw, 2 2. Um, let's quickly see. Uh, Guinea Bissau had a 1 0 at home to Namibia and then a 0 0. So they would have had the tiebreaker over Namibia. So uh, in that sense, they were safe. 
the um, game was 1-1 in the 89th minute. It's 2-1 for Mozambique, which would be enough for Mozambique to advance. And in the 90th, a minute later, Guinea-Bissau equalizes. So this was the high drama. And now, sorry that I completely botched that one. Um, and so Namibia qualifies mostly thanks to winning twice against Mozambique. That's the head-to-head. -head. They have the worst goal differential, but winning twice against Mozambique and emphatically so. I have to add, they won 1-0 uh, one at home and away uh, they won also 2-1. So yeah, that's pretty clear decision there. And then we have the last group, which also uh, Namibia actually qualifies for the second time as does Guinea-Bissau. Um, and the last time Namibia qualified was in 08. So yeah, Guinea-Bissau was uh, at the last uh, Africa Cup of Nations already present. And then lastly, we have Uganda and Tanzania qualifying. Tanzania thanks to a 3-0 win over Uganda. And that's the first, the second time that they qualify Tanzania since 1980. That was their last showing. So that's a really, really, really long um, wait. And you got to say, uh, Lesotho played only a 0-0 draw at the Cape Verde. And that's not enough. A win would have seen them through. So Lesotho missed out on uh, a big qualification there. Uganda also for the sixth time not qualified. I know they were the last time, but also doesn't strike me as uh, typically Africa uh, Cup big nation. But you know, I am actually quite uh, happy that we get to see more nations now. Will it be a better tournament? I doubt it. It's already the Asian Cup. Although the Asian Cup was not that bad this year. So now with those 24 teams qualified, again, Senegal, Madagascar, Morocco, Cameroon, Mali, Burundi, Algeria, Benin, Nigeria, South Africa, Ghana, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Democratic Republic of Congo, Guinea, Cote d'Ivoire, Angola, Mauritania. Where is Mauritania on the map? Can you find it? Find it out. Um, Tunisia and Egypt, Guinea-Bissau, another one of those. Try to find them on the map. <laughs> uh, Namibia, Uganda and Tanzania. Um, those are the qualified teams, which sets up the following pots and the hosts and the champ, current, current champions got an automatic spot in the uh, top groups. So this is Egypt and Cameroon, I'm pot one, joined by Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Tunisia and Senegal. Pot 2, Morocco, Nigeria, Algeria, Guinea, Mali, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, pot 3, Uganda, South Africa, kind of low, but you know, South Africa is not that great anymore. Guinea, Bissau, Zimbabwe, Angola, and Burundi. And in the last pot, uh, Mauritania, which actually is quite high ranking, I have to say. Namibia, Benin, Kenya, Madagascar, and Tanzania. I'll be curious for the draw. I mean, we know that... Um, even the third best, uh, four third place teams will make it through. But you know, there would be some juicy matchups like Egypt and Algeria, Cameroon and Nigeria. Um, I think Ghana and Democratic Republic of Congo will also be interesting to see on Ghana and Nigeria, uh, Egypt, Morocco, Tunisia, Morocco, you know, many great matchups possible that I honestly, I would watch those for sure. So, I will, the draw is I think on April 12th, so not too long from now. So I'm really curious to see how the draw will go. Uh, looking forward to that one. And I, of course, will make a video once the draw happens. And I will do my best to keep you updated on the Africa Cup of Nations. Absolutely love them. This is a tournament that I'm actually watching, watching frequently. Uh, not every game, but if it's on, I usually watch it. And it's usually not great soccer, but it, there's a lot of suspense. I remember, I think it was two years ago. Uh, when there needed to be a draw held at a hotel because two teams were level on points and everything it was between first and second place. Um, I also remember that uh, when Cote d'Ivoire against Ghana had one of those epic shootouts that lasted forever. And this was already the second time that those two played in a final and it ended in an epic shootout. So there's always things happening in Africa. Uh, it's probably one of the if you look at everything surrounding the tour tournament, it's probably one of the most exciting because it's not as super organized and whatever, because it's Africa. 
and that makes it exciting to me. Well, let me know what you think about the Africa of Nations qualifying, how it, how it was going. As I said, with 24 teams, you have the big boys there, and they were only minor surprises. Um, but I'm happy that we see three newly qualified teams, and I'm really waiting for the long names of the Madagascar national team. And Madagascar was even qualified ahead of this match day. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon. Club season is just around to restart again. So, uh, not to start again. I mean, we're going back to club season now. And there will be next international break in June with some tournaments. But in between, we have a draw for the Africa Cup of Nations. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.